to the Coders Campus Podcast, where you'll learn how to code from one of the best teachers in the industry. Whether you're an absolute beginner or a seasoned pro, the Coders Campus Podcast will teach you what you need to know to master the art of programming. And now, your host, Trevor Page. Hey, hey, fellow coders, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the Coders Campus Podcast. We've hit episode, what is this, number 19 now, I think, almost coming up to 20. And uh, today we're going to be diving into the concept of Route 53, which has uh, everything to do with our ongoing series on uh, AWS and how to launch uh, your very own web application into the cloud. So uh, yeah, you've, if you've been going through this uh, series so far, uh, the past, I don't even know how many episodes it's been, uh, we've been focused on the topic of AWS. You guys have been emailing me and asking me to continue uh, to teach you about this stuff. Uh, so it's my pleasure to come back yet again with one more episode talking about uh, this exact topic. So to recap uh, what we've done already, you have managed to uh, host and uh, launch your application into the cloud using something called Elastic Beanstalk, which is the um, product, the Amazon Web Services product that's used to host your application itself, which you know you upload your source code to, and it handles all the stuff around creating the web server and, and doing all the ins and outs to make sure that it will actually run in the cloud, if you will. Uh, but then we also need to learn how to uh, bring a database into uh, the picture because if you had a local host database in your uh, programmed into your code uh, and you've hosted your your code in the cloud now local host doesn't work anymore so <laughs> we need to uh, we need to learn how to fix that and and host a database using something called RDS which is yet again another AWS product. So now it comes to today, right now, we want to talk about one last subject that is important to this discussion, which is uh, creating a user-friendly URL to point to our application that is in the cloud. So right now, what we have access to inside of Elastic Beanstalk is sort of a a very non-user-friendly URL. Okay, so inside of the app, uh, if you go to your Elastic Beanstalk, you'll see it gives you sort of in the top middle area uh, uh, an access to, or in the dashboard in the top middle area of Elastic Beanstalk, it gives you uh, access to a URL that that will point to your application. So that's a URL that you can distribute on the web publicly, and you can point people to that URL, and if they access that URL, they will bring up your application and be able to use it, and all will be well. The only thing is... The URL is not uh, easy to sort of say to someone out loud and have them remember that particular URL. So it's something like, you know, custom hyphen env dot s342, you know, blah, 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 dot elasticbeanstalk.com or something. So it's a very long, very non-user-friendly URL. That's what I mean by non-user-friendly. So we want to make it user-friendly. We want to take a domain name that we can say out loud and someone can easily remember and have that domain name when they actually go to access it in their browser, type in that domain name, it actually points to your application and it actually brings up your application. So like if you go to facebook.com, it brings up Facebook. You don't have to go to some crazy long, you know, URL. You get the idea. So uh, what we need to do is we need to leverage something called Route 53, which is sort of Amazon's sort of, you know, networking content delivery, one of their networking content delivery products. So in order to access it, you log into your AWS, you know, area. You log into your AWS account, which is aws.amazon.com, I believe. Uh, and in the top left-hand corner, you click on the cube or services, whatever you like. And that will bring up your list of services that uh, Amazon Web Services supplies to you. And in the networking and content delivery section, which it, on you know in my screenshot that I see in front of me and on the show notes for this particular episode, it's four sort of categories down. It's in the top or the, in the bottom left-hand corner, and Route 53 is there. So you go ahead and click on Route 53. Once you've done that, if you've never set up a uh, a Route 53, that's actually called a hosted zone, we'll get there in a moment. If you've never created a hosted zone inside of Route 53, then you'll be, you know, presented with a splash page that sort of has, you know, a bunch of buttons on it saying get started now, get started now, get started now. So you can go ahead and click on any one of those blue get started now buttons, um, and that will bring you to um, a screen where you can actually, um, you know, go ahead and create what I, what I 
you know mentioned earlier, which is something called a hosted zone, which I guess now is as good a time as any to get into. So when we create this, these things called hosted zones, these hosted zones allow us to sort of forward our incoming HTTP traffic to our Elastic Beanstalk application uh, from essentially any domain that we actually own. Okay, so it's hosted zones are all about, um, you know, among other things, but mainly the 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 the, the real um, use for them is to point a domain name to an AWS application, an Elastic Beanstalk application. At least that's what we're going to be learning how to do today. So, uh, really, here the only uh, prerequisite is that you need to actually own a domain name somewhere. Okay, so you need to actually own a don't your own domain name that we that's going to be used to forward traffic when they go there to your Elastic Beanstalk application. So in the sort of uh, example that I'm going to be diving into today, I'm going to be using a domain by, uh, name by the name of uh, businessoftech dot com tech being technology so this is just a domain name that i own it's currently not doing anything for me i'm not i don't have anything pointing to it it's just sitting there um so i said hey why not just use this one as the example for this particular uh podcast slash blog post that i put up um so that's what we'll be using business of tech dot com uh, and the final outcome will be you know, when someone navigates to businessoftech.com, it'll send them to the Java application that we previously set up uh, in the previous episodes. So here, uh, we're, I'm going to sort of explain to you how to create your own hosted zone using that domain. So, uh, you know, what you'll need to do is once you go to, um, you know, the, the uh, what you call it, Route 53 product, and you've clicked on the Get Started Now button, you'll see a blue button that says Create Hosted Zone because you want to create shockingly a hosted zone to do what it is you want it to do so the hosted zone really when you create it all it needs is just really one piece of information is the domain name what domain name will this hosted zone sort of represent so that's where i type in businessoftech.com now the domain name for you obviously you will not type in businessoftech.com because you do not own businessoftech.com at least not as of the recording of this video so you're going to have to type in whatever domain name you own if you don't own a domain you can go out anywhere and get a domain name from tons of providers. Um, I use GoDaddy personally. Um, you know, GoDaddy had a bit of a bad reputation um, in the earlier days as being sort of a you know a discount brand, sort of low quality type you know provider. But I've been using them for years now, five years I think, and I haven't had any problems with them. So. I'm actually a bit of an advocate for GoDaddy because it's simple to use, it's not expensive, and it just works, which is exactly what I want from GoDaddy. So, uh, I, you know, I, I give them the, the, the head nod. Um, I, I can't speak um, badly of their products. So um, I would suggest you use GoDaddy, but you can use whatever provider you want. So uh, go ahead and uh, type in the domain name that you own into that uh, area when you're creating the hosted zone and then you go ahead and click the button to create the zone and then boom it creates a hosted zone for you um, now i should mention that when you create a hosted zone i believe it's 50 cents per month per hosted zone okay so if you want to forward traffic from one domain name to your application which is typically what people do um, then you're going to pay 50 cents per month uh, i don't remember if it's included for free for a year but come on guys it's 50 cents a month. It's not going to break your bank account, even if you do have to pay for it. So you, you, you're only going to have to create one hosted zone if you have one application anyway. Um, at least that's the norm. So you're going to be paying 50 cents a month, um, which is very inexpensive. So what is that? $6 a year. Is that right? Am I my math right? Probably. So come on. You can, you can afford it, ladies and gentlemen. So once you've created the hosted zone, um, you're, it's going to show you a screen now where you're sort of looking at your hosted zone and, and there's going to be a couple lines in there. And one of the lines is, is going to be of type NS, uh, which stands for name server. And it's going to list out values. And in the values that it lists, it's going to list four name servers. And these name servers, each, each one of the four name servers look like a domain name. So mine, in the example that I see in front of me on, on my screenshot, again, you can look at the uh, show notes, um, go to the show notes and see what I'm seeing, which is coderscampus.com forward slash 19. Um, and uh, you'll scroll down to the you know, section, I think, eight or step eight or whatever, which is where uh, we are at right now in our series on uh, you know, creating an AWS uh, product, or not product, but um, what should we call it? 
application and hosting it in the cloud. We're on step eight now. So I guess we've done eight episodes already, unless I've combined some of the, I probably combined some steps into, you know, past episodes. So maybe it's not eight episodes, but anyway, that is neither here nor there. Back on point, go there. You can see the screenshot. It's essentially going to give you four name servers. Each of the name servers look like a domain name. The ones I'm looking at right now, the first one is ns-578.awsdns-08.net. Um, so, you know, not a memorable name, but that's okay. These ones don't need to be memorable. So these are the name servers, uh, that you're going to use that, that your uh, domain name is actually going to point to. So how you do this, how you point your domain name to you're using these uh, name servers that are provided by root 53, it will vary from provider to provider, but you can easily Google the term, you know, change name servers on domain with GoDaddy or change name server on domain name with you know, uh, Bluehost or whatever provider you have, you can Google it and there will surely be an article on how to do this because this is not something uh, that is some obscure thing that people do. This is something that happens a lot. Um, you change the name servers on your domain. So in my example, I use, like I said, GoDaddy is my, my domain name provider. So I need to navigate to the DNS settings of businessoftech.com uh, inside of GoDaddy to change the name servers. So, um, you know, for that, it's it's a fairly simple process. I go to the domains that I own, I click on uh, DNS settings, and then I go down in the, in the DNS settings to name servers, and I set up my own custom name servers. And what I do is I copy paste the four name servers from root 53 into GoDaddy. Boom, 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 boom. Four name servers, copy, paste, save, and that's it. Okay, I've, I've now up the, updated the, the domain to point to uh, these name servers now. So essentially GoDaddy now knows to tell businessoftech.com to point to root 53. That's essentially what we've done now. So GoDaddy tells the domain name to point to uh, root 53. Okay. But now there's still more. We need to tell root 53 where to point. So um, good. We're almost there. So now in order to tell root 53 where to point, we need to create something called a record set inside of root 53. Again, a record set. Uh, now I can talk, I can write a whole article on DNS settings and record types and record sets and everything. But for now, the only thing that you really need to know is that um, we need to create a uh, A records. So these are called A records, um, like B records, C records, D records. These are called A records uh, inside of Route 53. So these are essentially pieces of data that tell the interwebs uh, where to go when someone uh, accesses a, a domain name. Okay, so uh, if someone goes to businessoftech.com, it's going to um, point. It's going to know where to point that person to. First, it's going to go to you know um, whoever the, the name server name server provider is, which is going to be root fifty three, and then root fifty three is going to tell it where to go um, to sort of resolve to for the for the, the traffic or the visitor who's visiting that particular URL. So essentially, you want to configure it so that when someone navigates to businessoftech.com, it should point to our AWS application. So here's how we do that. Like I said, we create a new record set. Um, and when we say create new record set inside of root 53, that's a, a little blue button near the top that says create record set. We click on that. It defaults to a record type. Okay. The a record is the type of record that we want to create right now. So um, we just need to go ahead and change some of the other options inside of what pops up sort of in the right hand side. Um, there's a little option called alias. Um, it would probably be set to no by default. Uh, but we do want to set up an alias because root 53 is using sort of a uh, it, root 53 is part of AWS and Elastic Beanstalk is part of AWS and Elastic Beanstalk, the application in there is where we want to point it to. So we can actually use an alias at this point inside of root 53. Uh, if we were not pointing it inside of AWS, then we would say alias is no. And then we'd actually, you know, point it to an actual IP address or something. Uh, but for now we can point it, we can say yes to point it to an alias and uh, and then in the target, the alias target, you can click on that little, it's a little text box. When you click on the text box, it's going to show you all the targets that you can uh, point it to. And you give it a few moments that it needs to sort of populate the dropdown options and everything. But once it sort of populates the dropdown options, you should see uh, in the, um, in mine, it's called the ELB Classic Load Balancers, but it might not be in that section. Uh, you just need to scroll around and look for ELB, which is essentially Elastic Beanstalk is what ELB stands for. And you should see a, a target um, uh, that you can point it to that is your uh, application, your Elastic Beanstalk application. So you click on uh, your Elastic Beanstalk application, 
And then that's it. You say create. There's a little button to you know create that A record. So we created an A record that has an alias, and the al alias's target is our Elastic Beanstalk application. There you go. Done. We've now done pretty much everything we need to point you know, the business of tech domain name to our application. Now, optionally, you might want to do a little bit more work. Um, so some of you might want to also point a subdomain to the same place as well. You might be saying, what's a subdomain? A subdomain is the text that appears before the actual domain name. Okay, so when I'm talking about my domain name, my domain name is businessoftech.com. So you can have a subdomain that is something that appears before businessoftech.com. So a common subdomain is www. Okay, and for those of you who never realized that before, there might be a light bulb going off going, oh, okay, I've seen www before. That's called a subdomain. So it's www.businessoftech.com. Okay, so that's actually that's extra work when people have when people create www. It's actually a subdomain. You actually don't need to type in www to go to certain well to any domain name. Uh, I don't know if I just blew your mind or not. I certainly my dad. Uh, if he's listening to this, I'm sorry. I'm going to call him out on this. But my dad always goes to www dot and then and then the domain name dot com. And some people haven't set up the subdomain, the www subdomain, and then in which case you get some sort of an error. So really, when you buy a domain name, you really only need to go to that domain name. You're wasting effort and time by typing in www whenever you're going to a domain name. So that's a little, um, you know, I, I'm a lazy coder. I don't, if I don't have to type in four extra characters, then I don't want to type in four extra characters. So I don't type in those four extra www dot characters. In any case, perhaps you want to set it up so that people who you know, go to www dot your domain name. They actually access your application, and we can do that. We can create another record set. So go ahead and cre you can click the button, the blue button, to create a record set again inside of Route fifty three, and then we're creating another A record. It's going to be the exact same type of record. The difference is now we actually going we are actually going to fill in the name of this uh, record, so this A record. So the name of it is going to be www. Okay, now this, this name represents your subdomain name. So you can type in whatever subdomain you want. If you want to add more subdomains, you can go ahead and type in some other, you know, combination of letters or whatever to be your subdomain if that's what you want. So like dev.businessoftech.com or QA. I've seen that before, right? People have different subdomains depending on the environment that they want to access. Um, anyway, for our uh, example, I'm just going to type in www. Leave the record t uh, record set type as a record, um, so a should be the one. Alias is going to be yes again because again it's an alias. We're going to point to our own Elastic Beanstalk environment uh, from the alias target dropdown list. You can choose your Elastic Beanstalk environment um, from that list. Um, there's also the the routing policy. I forgot to mention the routing policy. It's by default it's set as simple, and that's all you really need. The routing policy I always set as simple. It's you know. It just means if someone goes there, it just it doesn't have to do any extra work. It just says, okay, it's a typical, you know, visitor. Just point it to that alias and don't do anything crazy. And then I go ahead and click on create. So there you go. Like we're we're pretty much done here. We've we've set up our a regular businessoftech.com as well as www.businessoftech.com to point to our uh, Elastic Beanstalk application. So we're like I said, pretty much done at this point. The only thing that we need to do now is have patience. Okay, which can be very difficult for programmers um, is just to have patience because you need to wait between five minutes and sometimes a few hours for these changes to take effect. Um, both the changes that we made in our DNS settings to change the name servers on the domain. So if you go to GoDaddy, those changes can take, you know, up to a few hours, uh, as well as the changes in Route 53. Those tend to be quicker in, in Route 53, but those can take a little while as well. So you just need to have patience. So that means that even though you set everything up properly, if you go to businessoftech.com or whatever uh, domain name that you set up, um, it might not still be resolving to the application. It might just be an error page, or it might be whatever it was that you had there before. It might not have changed. And you might be thinking, oh, I did something wrong. But no, you trust me, you just need to wait. 
So um, when I ran through this test uh, myself today, uh, right before I recorded this podcast, it took about 25 minutes before the changes actually propagated out and I actually saw the domain forwarding to the application. So my domain name was previously pointing to a different AWS application. My businessoftech.com was actually pointing to a different little test uh, AWS application. And when I um, set up these new changes, it, it took about 25 minutes before it actually pointed to uh, the next AWS application that I set up uh, for the purposes of recording this podcast and this blog post. So, you know, it, it can take a little while. So from my limited experience with this DNS stuff, I've noticed that if you live in the US of A, in the United States of America, uh, the changes will typically prop propagate a little bit more quickly, I've, I've noticed, like five to 10 minutes. Um, if you live in Canada, it takes about, you know, 10 to 30 minutes. And if you live in a country with really, without really, you know, any solid internet infrastructure and internet's not something that comes naturally to that area, it can take a lot longer. Okay, I've seen it take days uh, in some, not days, but maybe 24 hours in some cases. Um, I remember someone, uh, some people in India, uh, I'd made a change to my DNS settings and some people in India were still reporting an issue with my domain name almost 24 hours after I'd made the change. So it took a long time for the changes to propagate to India. So my changes that I made were pretty much immediate to my uh, American customers. It took me, you know, 20, 30 minutes to see the changes, but it took my customers in India like a full day before they saw the changes. So your results will vary depending on the day of the week, if there's lots of internet traffic, where you are in the world, what the internet connection's like, um, blah, 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 blah. So who knows, right? So lesson here is get up, go get a cup of tea, make yourself a meal, uh, drink a beer. I don't know. Just forget about everything that you've just did, done. If you've gone through and set everything up, um, you know, take a break, come back after, you know, 30 minutes or an hour, then you can check and see if your domain name uh, points to your application or not. And if you've waited hours and hours, like a full day and still nothing is working, then Hey, maybe you've set something up incorrectly. Now you can go back, go back over all the steps that uh, are inside of this blog article at coderscampus.com forward slash, uh, 19. Um, go back over it and see if maybe you have made a mistake or something like that, okay? But trust me, don't try to fiddle with all the settings after five minutes when you see that it's not pointing, it's, when you go to your domain, it's not pointing to your application yet, okay? Don't think you've done it wrong because you're just going to mess yourself up. You're going to make changes and then you're not going to know, like maybe it was working and now you've made a, bit, a couple of changes and now it's not working and you wouldn't have known that that was the case. So just be patient is all I ask of you. So having drilled that into your into your brains, uh, I think that's pretty much it. That's all I really need to talk about with respect to Route 53, forwarding your domain. Uh, fairly painless stuff. Again, there's a great article, like I said, go to coderscampus.com forward slash 19. That will sort of forward you to the, the master uh, blog post that has all this like 5,000 words of stuff. Um, scroll down to step eight, and that is where all this great content uh, it will you know be consumable by yourself. There's great screenshots and everything walkthroughs to make it very obvious um, about how to do this stuff. So as long as you follow those steps in the blog post, uh, you're going to be in good uh, good hands. So hopefully that doesn't uh, go go over horribly. Hopefully that goes over very well when you set that up. Um, and that's it. You've now launched your own uh, Java web application into the cloud with a domain name that you can give to your mom or your best friend or, uh, you know, complete strangers on the internet and they can go and uh, enjoy whatever application, web application, application it was that you've created with the Java language. So congratulations to you for sticking it out and going through all these steps. Uh, it is a momentous occasion and it's, uh, you know, this is great knowledge that you can now take with you into the future and apply it again and again and again when you release more and more applications because hopefully you will endlessly be creating brand new awesome applications that will make the world a better place and you can thank this guy trevor page for teaching you how to do it so thanks so much for doing that um for listening till the end of this episode again uh it's reviews and ratings and reviews and iTunes are what keep the show going and keep it free and keep me on track and everything. Um, I, I think I received four reviews in the last month. Uh, not enough, ladies and gentlemen, come on, please, um, go to, I think it's coderscampus.com slash review or coderscampus.com slash, uh, iTunes. So if I go to coderscampus.com slash iTunes, let me try it right now. Um, uh, that should open up iTunes on your machine. I know if you don't have iTunes, on your computer, you're going to have to install it to leave a, a review. I wish it wasn't like this. 
uh, it's a, such a huge pain in the butt. I, I concur with you. I feel your pain. Um, but if you really do appreciate these free tutorials and you enjoy getting this kind of knowledge and you enjoy hanging out with me for these little 30 minute work sessions, um, please, please, please do that. Go to coderscampus.com slash iTunes. Install the iTunes application on your computer, if just to leave a rating and review for the show. So please do that, um, and uh, hopefully I will see you uh, promptly in the next episode of this podcast, which I don't even know what we're going to be talking about. Uh, I I don't... Uh, maybe we can transition into, like, JavaScript or something? Uh, I don't know. We're going to have to see where the... Uh, winds of programming take us. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. Take care of yourselves. As always, happy learning and bye for now. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Coders Campus podcast. But before you go, Trevor has a favor to ask you. In order to keep these episodes free, he'd love for you to leave a rating and review the podcast on iTunes. Just go to coderscampus.com slash review to leave your own rating and review of the show. So if you have 30 seconds to spare right now, please help out by leaving a rating and review via coderscampus.com slash review. It will ensure that you continue to get these awesome free podcast episodes each and every week. So if you like free swag, head on over to coderscampus.com slash review. Happy learning. Happy learning.